Hello again, everyone. This is Mr. Hill, Texas history teacher for Team Michigan State at Owsley Junior High School in Arlington, Texas. And today we are going to learn about the most devastating natural disaster to ever occur in the United States. We are, of course, going to be talking about the Galveston hurricane of 1900. So first and foremost, let's talk about hurricanes. What is a hurricane? Well, a hurricane is a large tropical storm with a circular motion, and it's made up of these huge thunderstorm cells. Now, what makes a hurricane a hurricane is that it, it is born, it, is, it forms over water um, in the Atlantic Ocean, and as it develops, it begins this spinning motion, and the speed of a hurricane is, um, or what makes a hurricane a hurricane is the speed of the wind. Uh, a hurricane has to have at least 75 mile an hour sustained winds to be considered a hurricane, and it may vary anywhere from from 75 even up to you know nearly 200 miles an hour, 175 miles an hour. Um, so uh, very devastating, especially when they hit land. Uh, here in recent years, we've had um, many, many uh, massive hurricanes that have, have devastated uh, parts of the United States. Uh, Puerto Rico uh, recently, um, yeah, just a, a devastating. If they're if you're not careful in a hurricane, there can be an enormous loss of life. Definitely an enormous loss of property. So a very dangerous situation. Now, another key term that we have is one that you may have heard before, but you may not know the exact answer to, and that is sea level, okay, sea level. So sea level is the level of the ocean's surface. Now, it is used, that level of the ocean surface, it is used to calculate the height of geographical features such as mountains and cities, etc. Uh, and to give you an idea how sea level is measured, so you have uh, you have a place here like a, a beach, and and wherever the water flows in from the ocean, whenever it washes up on shore, the little waves and everything, that level is sea level, where the level of the water is, the level of the ocean water, that is sea level. Okay also called absolute sea level. So absolute sea level would be measured as zero because it is at zero feet above sea level. It is the sea level. Now, you find a fixed point of land and then you measure the distance between absolute sea level and that fixed point of land and that determines the distance in feet. Okay, so the distance in feet determines the elevation of a place. So our essential question today is what changes occurred in Galveston following the hurricane of 1900? So let's, uh, let's take a look. Galveston in 1900. Um, in 1900, Galveston was the largest city in Texas with a population of nearly 38,000 people. Now, we look at the size of Galveston now, and that's the size of just a small to average um, suburb uh, of Dallas or Fort Worth. Um, 38,000 doesn't seem like that many people, but remember, this is at a time, this is at a time when most people lived in the country. They lived in what are called rural areas. And um, they were farming, they were ranching, uh, they sort of lived out in the country. Now, Galveston was such a huge city and it was located right on the coast of Texas. So it had a, a large, um, it was a large docking area for ships. Ships would come in, they would unload cargo to be dispersed throughout Texas. And then those ships would be loaded back with other cargo and then shipped out to other places around the world. And in Galveston, over 2 million bales of cotton were shipped every year. So it was a huge economic area. Uh, essential to Texas. So the deadliest day in American history. So the deadliest day in American history is actually September 8th, uh, 1900. 
But to understand the events of September 8th, we have to look at the day before. On Friday, September 7th, 1900, the Galveston Weather Office received telegrams from Washington, D.C., warning of a potentially dangerous storm. Uh, the storm that eventually hit Galveston had for several weeks before been traveling through the Atlantic Ocean. It had hit Cuba uh, and uh, the weather service in Cuba uh, had sent warnings to other areas, including the United States via telegram that this uh, massive storm was brewing and it looked like it was gonna hit Texas. Well, unfortunately in Texas, they didn't believe that a massive storm could ever do anything harmful to, to Galveston. They believed that, that they were safe. Well, as the day progressed, the oncoming storm caused large waves to begin to crash into Galveston. Uh, thunderstorms and high winds hit Galveston. Unfortunately, they had dealt with a lot of large waves. They had dealt with thunderstorms uh, and high winds, but they had never dealt with anything as massive as what was bearing down on them. And the people, because they didn't have the early warning signs, the early warning ways of, of forecasting big storms like this, they had no idea what was coming. So very few people actually evacuated the island. Oh, and by the way, I guess I forgot to mention this. You guys do know that Galveston is an island. Okay, Galveston is, is seriously just an island right off the coast of Texas. Um, it is connected, and it was connected back in 1900. It was connected by several bridges to the mainland. So on Saturday, September 8th, uh, actually very early in the morning, late at night, depending on how you look at it, um, the storm began to batter Galveston. Now, at its highest point, Galveston was only eight feet above sea level. Now, I want you to think about that. Um, from the level of the ocean to the highest land point in Galveston, and we're not talking about buildings or anything, we're talking about the highest land point, uh, it was about eight feet. That is, that's about the height of a, of a door, okay? So Galveston was a very flat area it was right on the coast and it was it was right right at sea level so sometime in the early morning hours of september 8th a 15 feet high wall of water and winds of up to 150 miles per hour nearly wiped galveston off the map okay so imagine we're talking the highest level in galveston was only eight feet above sea level a 15 feet high wall of water. That means the sea level was 15 feet from the highest point in Galveston, measure 15 feet up from there. So it was higher than most second story buildings. Galveston was flooded and flattened. So once again, I'm gonna use this little illustration. We talked about sea level. Uh, at its highest point, Galveston was eight feet above sea level. Well, when this storm surge came in, now, now what I want you to imagine with a hurricane and what causes what we call a storm surge, which is the rising water, imagine taking a bathtub and filling it to the very top with water. And then you take a fan, like a, a, an electric fan, okay? And you turn that fan to where the fan is facing right directly down at the water. And you turn that fan on high. As Imagine as that air, that wind is blowing down on the water, it's pushing the water down. Now what happens to the water around the edges of the tub as you, as you force the water down in the center of the tub? Well, it, it, it rises, it comes splashing out of the tub. So the sort of the same thing happened with a hurricane or the same thing happens with a hurricane because there's so much wind and pressure pressing down on, on the top of the ocean that it pushes this water outwards from the center of the hurricane and it, it causes it to rise. So in 1900, the storm surge during the hurricane pushed a wall of water about 15 feet deep over the island. Houses were lifted off their foundations 
and they burst as they slammed into each other. Now, remember, the houses then were made of wood. Uh, there weren't the cement houses that we know, to, uh, cement foundations that we have today. Um, they were not brick houses. They were wood houses. They were lifted off their foundation by that rising water. And as they moved along, as they were floating on top of the water, they were crashing into other houses. And, and all of these houses, many, many, many of them were filled with people. People were drowned. Uh, they were crushed by debris as the houses just sort of exploded. Um, the wind, because it was up to 150 miles an hour, the, the, the shingles on the houses in Galveston were made of slate, uh, flat pieces of rock. And as those shingles were ripped from the, from the roofs of houses, um, they were like missiles, projectiles, and they just tore everything in their way to shreds, and that included people. So, in all, somewhere between 6,000 and 12,000 people were killed in Galveston. Now, we have no way of knowing an exact number. They had no way of knowing back then an exact number because they didn't keep up with, you know, the way where people were, how many people were in a place. They had census records. They had a count of how many people lived there, but it didn't take into consideration how many people may have been visiting, how many people may have been there on business, uh, or, or people who just kind of fell through the cracks and they weren't part of the census. But that is a massive number of people to be killed in one event. So to put those numbers into perspective, okay, uh, as far as how many people died in Galveston compared to some other uh, mass casualty events that we've had here in the United States. The Galveston hurricane of 1900, as I said, between 6,000 and 12,000 people. In 2001, the 9-11 terrorist attacks killed 2,996. In 2005, Hurricane Katrina, another hurricane. So you can sort of compare apples to apples here. Hurricane Katrina, over 1,800 people were killed as a result of the hurricane. So as you can see, the Galveston hurricane, massive, massive casualties. Now, there were, um, there were, Effects, you know, we've talked about political, economic, geographic, and social. And when we talk about the Galveston hurricane, we need to talk about all three. Now, the political effects of the Galveston hurricane uh, were this. To rebuild Galveston, uh, the, the city needed to make changes to its government. So to rebuild, Galveston needed to make changes to its city government. Galveston needed a stronger and more efficient form of city government to rebuild. So what they did is they went to what is called a commission form of city government. Um, in a commission form of city government, there is an elected mayor, and then they have council members or commissioners who are elected, and those commissioners have a specific duty with the city. Uh, one commissioner may be in charge of finance, uh, and which is um, the money that the city pays out and the money that the city takes in. One commissioner may have the responsibility of dealing with first responders, such as um, um, fire department, police department. Uh, one commissioner deals with utilities, and then maybe another one deals with uh, health care. So, each commissioner has a specific duty in the city. Now, I will go back to this real quick and tell you, um, this form of government that Galveston adopted and, and still uses to this day is actually one that after the Galveston hurricane, and when people saw how successful this form of government was here in Texas, uh, a lot of cities went and, and started using that um, sort of that framework to form their governments as well. So they Galveston sort of set the trend for a lot of cities and towns in Texas. So some of the economic effects, and this is where it really gets um, 
has a huge effect on, on Galveston that we know today. Um, Galveston, because it was a huge place for shipping, uh, shipping and receiving and, and, and shipping things out. Um, but docks and warehouses were destroyed. Um, shipping and trade companies could not afford to wait for Galveston to rebuild. So after the storm, when so many, the docks were destroyed, the warehouses were destroyed, the shipping companies, they still needed to do their business. And the closest place to Galveston that had access to the water and had shipping facilities was Houston. And businesses moved north to Houston, uh, which had been untouched by the storm. And because of this, Galveston never regained its status as a major business center in Texas. So Galveston went from being this huge hub of economic activity to today, Galveston is best known as a tourist spot. It's where people go to uh, to visit the beach, you know, to, to visit the little shops and things that Galveston has. But it, it never regained its luster as, a, as sort of an economic uh, uh, place. Now, some of the geographic effects, uh, and this is also pretty big, the storm leveled 12 city blocks, which was about three-fourths of the island. The storm surge caused water to pour in from all directions. Approximately 3,600 buildings were destroyed. They were just wiped out. And all bridges connecting to the mainland were destroyed. So the people who were on Galveston Island um, after the storm, uh, they were stuck there for days and days. And uh, the only way to get back to the mainland was on boat. The problem is so many buildings and houses had been destroyed that the, 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 the water area between the island and the mainland was just you could it's like you could almost walk from Galveston to the mainland across the wood that was that was strewn on that area there the bay so you couldn't actually walk across it but that's what it looked like because there was so much debris floating in the water now this is what Galveston looks like today okay uh, to give you a an idea of the devastation that Galveston dealt with because of this hurricane. When the storm surge hit, the area in red where the area was the area that was just wiped and clean, was just scrubbed, scoured, leveled by the storm. So obviously uh, this area around here where the name Galveston is, that's the higher elevation in the town. Uh, and a lot of the, the buildings and things there, many of them did survive. So the social effects, um, very devastating to families, of course. Um, families were left without support because of the number of deaths. Uh, there were a large number of orphans uh, in Galveston. Um, there were a large number of, of orphans, certainly, but in a recent book that I read about the hurricane, it said that the largest loss of life um, was, was children. Um, thousands of children died as a result of, of the, uh, the storm because they were just too small uh, for their parents to keep up. A family with, you know, six, seven kids, it was very difficult for the parents to, um, um, to keep track of them and to hold on to them in the in the, the rising water and the storm surge and the, the wind and the rain and um, it was pretty terrible. The American Red Cross established an orphanage and they raised money by selling photographs of the storm devastation. And yes, that is the uh, the body of a person uh, under the debris in Galveston. Uh, there were so many people that were killed um, that um, they were finding bodies in Galveston for months after the storm. Um, they said that the, um, the stench of death hung over the city. 
um, especially considering it was uh, in early September when it was still extremely hot, uh, very little wind, um, and it, it just it was it was overwhelming. Um, other social effects: homes along the coastline were built on stilts to uh, protect them from floodwaters in the future. And if you go to Galveston, you will see many, many um, uh, houses along uh, the beach areas that are built on these high stilts to keep, uh, to keep them from flooding in the event of another, uh, another hurricane, another storm surge. And today, you know, we still have hurricanes in Galveston and they cause a lot of devastation, but we don't see the loss of life like we did in the past because of early warning systems and evacuation routes that are now used. If you've ever driven from, from say, Houston or, or Galveston to, to Dallas, you may have seen um, these um, um, signs, road signs that say uh, uh, hurricane evacuation route. Now, the people of Galveston after the hurricane, they realized that they could not live through another hurricane of that nature. They could not adapt to that. What they were going to need to do was modify Galveston. They were going to need to change Galveston in order to be able to survive future hurricanes. So the first thing they did is they rebuilt the city. All buildings and roads were constructed with elevated foundation, which uh, foundations, which was a, a great engineering feat at the time. Uh, the houses in Galveston with, that were rebuilt were built up and uh, built way off the ground. And I'll explain why here in just a moment. They also raised uh, utility lines and, and they rebuilt roads. Now, the reason that they raised the buildings in Galveston uh, was because they built what is called a seawall, okay? Uh, the Galveston seawall is a 16 feet high wall uh, that protects the city of Galveston now from storm surge. And as you can see this picture of this man, he's standing on top of the seawall. You can see this seawall in Galveston today. It doesn't look like what you see here. Now, if you're on the, if you're on the water side, it does. You see this slope, this curvature of the seawall. That's so when uh, waves slam into it, they are directed. They just run right up this wall and shoot straight up in the air and back over into the, uh, into the waters of the Gulf. Um, the seawall the sea wall was originally built and it was made three miles long along the front edge uh, between uh, of the Gulf and, and Galveston. It was later extended to six miles. Now, the reason that if you see the seawall today, it doesn't look like this. You see this, this giant flat wall is because on the back side of this wall, the city of Galveston was raised. That's right. The city was elevated. So as I told you, new houses were built on stilts behind the seawall. The houses that had survived the, uh, the, the hurricane, those houses were raised. So all existing structures were jacked up. They were raised up off the ground. They were built on a pier and beam system. Um, and then what happened after that is they the people of Galveston took these huge steam powered gas or even gas powered pumps and they turned those pumps on and they raised Galveston by 17 feet by pumping sand from miles out in the floor of the Gulf of Mexico. Okay, so here we see a, a picture of some boys standing on a pipe and these pipes were brought into Galveston. They were laid in Galveston and they would turn these pumps on and they would suck the sand and the dirt and the grit and everything at the bottom of the Gulf of Mexico and it poured it into Galveston. And what they did is they basically, once they raised all the buildings, they filled in underneath them with, uh, with soil from the, the bottom of the Gulf of Mexico. So our summary, 
After the hurricane, Galveston changed its government to better respond to future disasters. That's the P, political. The city lost much of its economy when businesses moved to Houston. That's the E for economy. A seawall was built to avoid the effects of future, future hurricanes. That's the G for geographic. And of course, there was a huge loss of life, which would cover the social. So all four parts of PEGS uh, have been talked about and hit on uh, with the uh, the effects of the Galveston hurricane. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope you learned a little bit. Uh, the Galveston hurricane is a is something that, that everyone should know about. Uh, there's a lot of great resources on the internet, some videos that you can watch about it. Uh, I would highly recommend, uh, if you're interested at all in, in weather, uh, that you, you check that out. So until next time, this has been Mr. Hill. You guys have a, uh, a good day, and I'll talk to you later.